Good morning and welcome to Photo Justice Photo Moment, the first live daily photo show on YouTube every weekday morning, 9.30 a.m. Pacific. If you're not here live, you could be, and you should be, because it's a lot of fun. If you're watching this recording and you ever have a chance to tune in live, please do. It's a lot of fun. You get to participate in the chat, and I get to put up your chat on screen, and we get to see what you're saying, and it's a lot of fun, because the chat doesn't get saved. It's super lame, but this is my way of saving the chat. So, welcome and good morning. For those of you who were here uh, or missed, I should say, for those of you who missed yesterday's show on the Lens Roundup, on the Micro Four Thirds Lens Roundup, that was really fun. There was a lot of information packed into a relatively short time, and I'm really looking forward to continuing working on that. And there were some, there have been some comments in there, there's been a lot of discussion already on it, um, recommending other lenses, people talking about, well, I can't afford this, what else can I get, and some discussions of lenses I've never even heard of before, which I even pointed out in yesterday's show is one of the really cool, fun things about Micro Four Thirds, you can get lenses from all over the place. It's great. All kinds of companies you never heard of make lenses for Micro Four Thirds. Some of them are super awesome. Some of them are super crappy, and that's part of what makes them awesome because they got icky optics and the funny refractions, and that's just lends itself to the lens. It's, it's awesome. So I love all that. So if you missed yesterday's show, do check that out. That was a lot of fun. If you are watching live now and you're commenting and you will have a question for me, two things. Make sure you put at photo Joseph in front of the question. That way I see it on my screen. You can see what that looks like right there. So get those at photo Joseph's in there. Gets my attention. Or if you really, really want to get my attention, there's that little super chat. There's a little dollar sign thing down there. It's called a super chat button. It allows you to throw a couple of bucks my way, which uh, obviously helps to keep the show on the air. And also the second part of this is if you have a question related to what we're talking about today, ask it while we're chatting away here. If you have a question that is not related to the topic at hand, hold it until after the show when we get into the commentary, we get into the extended Q&A, and then you can ask whatever you want. So got that? Got that. Good. What are we talking about today? Today we're talking about this guy again, the Lumu Power, Lumu Labs light meter dealio. We talked about this a week or two ago. The show is already linked up here, so you can grab that. If you, uh, if you didn't see it. And that was kind of a first look unboxing-ish, looking at the app and so on. And one of the problems that we had that day was I did a, a color temperature comparison because to me, that's why I bought this thing. It, I bought this thing for the color temperature reading and I compared it to what the camera did automatically and it was quite different. And the uh, one of the folks from Luma Labs has put a extensively, massively huge comment which here, let me just show you briefly this monster comment that he put up on the site responding to this. And really, for the most part, this is a user guide. He admits in here that there is not a manual. So we don't have a manual yet, but we're working on it. He kind of wrote a manual here, which is awesome. It's crazy cool. All kinds of good stuff in here. I was thinking I'd go through all of this, but then I realized um, we don't have a week. So I'm not gonna go through all of it. But the key thing in here, is I was obviously wanting their attention because of the failed uh, uh, color temperature test. And so he told me two things. He said that I can reset the hardware. So that's, we will do that. I'm gonna have to, I haven't done it yet. So we're gonna follow his instructions, reset the hardware. And he said that they have discovered that some lights cause abnormal readings. Odd. So here's what we're gonna do. Here's the plan for today. I'm gonna reset this. We're going to repeat the same test that we did last time. So I've got my gray card here. We're going to take a picture with my GH5 set to auto white balance of the gray card. And then I'm going to take a color temperature meeting with this. Whatever that says, I'm going to dial that into the camera, take another picture. We're going to bring both of those into Lightroom and compare them and see what we've got. That's the plan after the reset. If, I guess regardless whether it's accurate or not, we're then going to go out into the studio where I've got another setup with different types of lighting where I can basically redo the test but under different types of lighting. So the lighting that I have in here are LED panels from a particular manufacturer. Um, the ones that are out there are going to be LED panels from a different manufacturer. And so we're going to just see what happens. Oh, which just reminded me, Ryan, I need the, the little, that little mini Felix light that is on a light stand right behind my my demo table out there. If you could grab that for me, please. It's, you're gonna have to unscrew it. Oh, there's a battery too. It's probably charging on the floor. I need both of those. Thank you. Um, so that's the, that's the plan. That is the plan. So while we're doing that, we're of course gonna jump back and forth to the questions and see what's going on here. Let me pull up the chit chat and see if there's anything I wanna jump into before we start. Um, yeah, you guys are talking about, okay, so just quick reference back to yesterday's show. Scorgasms is saying, would be really neat if you could take the same pick with different lenses for comparison sake or videos. That's huge. Um, okay, the battery for it too is, it's on the floor there, it's charging, yeah. Um, 
That's that's a that's a big ask. I don't know. If, oh, and the white dome. Sorry, I don't know if you could hear me. Because um, that'd be like a hundred. I mean, different lenses. Different lenses are the same focal length you're talking about. And sorry, you didn't hear me. The white dome. There's a little. <laughs> it's great having an assistant. Um, the uh, if I have a similar focal length, like the 42. That's the one. Thank you. The 42.5 millimeter. I've got the Noctocron and the cheap version, the 1.7. Those I will compare. Yes, that I will do. For sure. Okay. We're set. So this I need. He handed me. There it is. I'm going to need this. So we won't need it right this second, but we'll need that momentarily. Let's just get that set aside. This is my. Doesn't matter. That's my Felix light that I can change the color temperature on. See, look at this thing. I can go. Ooh, make it warm. Make it cool. Make it warm. Make it cool. Make it. Anyway, I love this thing. Super great light. So we'll get that set aside. I'm going to need that. Don't need this. Don't need that. I need this. I need this. Let's start with the reset. So unfortunately, I can't show you the screen like I normally would plugging in. Well, this is plugged in because they both need the lightning port and it's only got one. So unfortunately, I can't show you that. Um, but I am going to quickly look at his note here. Let's bring this back up here so you can see it, where he does say how to do the reset, which, um, I, good Lord, um, he did it at Photo Joseph. He didn't actually, he didn't do at Photo Joseph. He did an at Joseph in here where... Luminance mode, photo ambient, photo flash. I think it was under like your color temperature. Um, could you, could you, no, darn it. Okay, I'm just going to do a quick find, reset, and no, that wasn't, darn it, he didn't say reset. What did he say? He's put at Joseph, that much I know. Here we go. You can factory restore your Luma power in the general app settings. Okay, so that's what we're going to do first. So I'm going to plug this thing in from the home screen, plug it in. I think it's going to ask permission. It asks permission every time. I don't know why it does that. Light Meter would like to communicate with the Luma Labs Lumu Power. That's the app. I hit allow, and that launches the app. Okay, good. So then I go into the general settings. I know you can't see this board. It's going to do like this general, general settings. And somewhere in here is a reset. Dark mode, open last, open auto app, open. Haptic feedback, continuous measuring Lumu Power calibration. Maybe it's under there. No, you got an EV and a Lux calibration. So I guess if you know it's off by a quarter stop or something, you can calibrate for that. But that's not what I want. Well, where's the reset? You can factory restore your Luma power in the general app settings. Well, that's where I am. Let's go back in there. General app settings, customize home screen, dark mode, auto open last, auto open, haptic feedback, and auto open last. I like that on haptic feedback, show decimals, continuous measuring. That's something else I've turned on now, continuous measuring. So instead of pushing the button to get a reading, there's a start stops. You push start and it's just constantly reading. I think that's pretty cool. Lumu power calibration is not under there. Maybe it's not in general. Let's go back to support. Is it under support? Well, this isn't good. Troubleshoot. Lumu doesn't work. Factory restore. Whew. Okay. Factory restore. This will restore your Luma power to factory settings. Make sure you have internet connection. That I do. Restore. Okay. Do not unplug. Restore finish successfully. Super. Don't know why I would need that, given that I've only been using it for half a minute, but, um, but there we go. So now that that is set, we are going to, and I, I know I don't, last time I had a close-up camera on here, I will have that out there, the close-up camera's out there. So, so let's go to um, color temperature. And it says to use super, super important. We'll look at this again out there. At the top of this, there's a little icon that shows you whether you're supposed to be reading from the dome side or from the flat side. Super important. I did not realize that last time until I used it for a little bit. So we kind of fumbled around a little bit, but we got it figured out. Color temperature is the flat side. So I'm going to flip it around. It, can, it doesn't matter if you flip it around. It's just a case of I want to be able to set this on the, um, on the table like this. So I need the flat side up. But if I was to have the flat side the other way and I wanted to get the color meter uh, coming this way, I would just hold it like this, right? You got it. So it doesn't matter. You can flip it either way. In the device, you just have to point the right side at your light source. Okay, so color temperature meter is on. Flat side is set. Let me clear some space on this table for my gray card. The gray card is down. And let's see, let's do, the, let's do the auto first. So set the camera, aperture priority, and uh, we're good. It's in picture mode. It's it's all set. Let's go to white balance. Make sure white balance is an auto. It was not, so that's good. I double check that. Auto white balance, and take a picture. There we go. I'm gonna take a second one because sometimes I've noticed that the first picture kind of goes, "Oh, that was a really wrong white balance," and it fixes it. Um, I've seen that occasionally. These two looked exactly the same though. Yeah, these two are identical. So. Uh, so there's my white balance 
shot in auto with the camera. Now, we're gonna take this thing, set it down. I'm gonna hit start for the white balance measuring. I'm gonna put it right, gonna put the reader right in the center of the dot there. And it says, let me stop it. Okay, it's, it's kind of, it's, it's doing a little dance, 4360, 4380, that's super close, that's fine. Okay, we're gonna stop it. It says 4370 degrees Kelvin at minus one tenth magenta shift. And the, the shifts here don't necessarily correlate to what's in the camera, but the, um, the uh, what was it, Marco from Luma Labs did point out that they're gonna be adding other scales in here that match up with things you'd find in Lightroom and I think other cameras and so on. I, I read it kind of quickly this morning, but, uh, but that's great. Okay, so 4370. So now I'm gonna go into my camera here and I'm sorry I don't have, actually maybe I can do this, hold on. The camera I can hook up here. Okay, so we're gonna put the camera now into that white balance setting. So let's get this up and running, there we go. Uh, this screen, okay, so there's the camera. We're gonna go into white balance, not that, where's white balance, white balance. And you're gonna go into fixed temperature, uh, oops, wrong one, color degree Kelvin. And I need to set this to 4370. So the number is at the top of the screen. And then it says a magenta shift of minus one out of 10. Now that's, that's the tough one, but I'm just gonna go one, because this does have nine positions. So we're gonna go with the one, minus one, magenta towards one, yep, that's right, because if it was the other way, it would say green. Yep, that's good, okay, so that should be right. So now, let's take that picture, focus and snap, and there we go. Okay, so that is now set, all right? All righty, yes, we're good. Oh, I should have taken it with the, let me do this, let me do it again with this and the, the device in there, so we know which picture is which. Does that sound fair? That sounds fair, okay. Now, let's see, I can get rid of this, get rid of this. We'll need that later. Let's turn the camera off and we're gonna pull out the card and take a look. Let me take a look what's going on in the chat room while we're doing this. Um, okay, no, no questions for me, that's good right now. Pop this guy out and into the MacBook Pro. Get Lightroom fired up. And as soon as that's fired up, I will switch over to uh, no catalog. The last one I used was uh, plugged into an actual drive. I think it's going to create a new one. Oh, it found another catalog. Okay, good. So let's get this full screen. Let's go to the Mac and let's uh, go to import li uh, library. Come here, you. Come here. Import. Import. And there we go. So we can already see a huge difference in here, but I'm just going to select these two. So the first one is the auto white balance in the camera. This one is the white balance from the Lumu. Lumuhumu, and see, no subfolders, uh, no rename, I uh, don't care about that. And where are we gonna put this? It's fine where it is. Um, that's good, just hit import. Hit import, and then we'll look at the last imported album. So there we go, all right. So this is clearly a very dramatic difference, and this does feel like what we saw last time, doesn't it? I mean, that's a massive, massive difference in the white balance reading. And I think it's pretty safe to say that this is more accurate than this. You guys agree? I think you guys agree. I think you guys agree. Okay, so we are gonna head out in the other room and we're gonna try settings out there. Before we do that though, let's just see what's going on in the chat. Um, oh, nothing else I need to address right now. Okay, cool, let's go out there. So, I gotta hope I get all this right. Let me unplug my ears and tuck this away so I don't tangle over myself. I need this, I need this, I need this, I need, all I need is this lamp and this and this guy and the switcher and let's go find the right one to that view. There we go. And I'm also going to mute my mic pack as soon as I get out here. And there we go. We should be good to go. This should all be working now. Now I gotta take these out or I can't, I can't hear myself if I'm doing that. All right, Ryan, are we looking good over there? Good. Everything's good, excellent. Okay, so, microphone. So now, let's see here, I've got this close up. Let's check this, um, plug this guy back in. And fire this guy back up, there we go. There's our white balance meter. And I have, if I get the right one, remote camera, that should be switched over to this. So is that, yes, excellent, everything is working. I had to like look over my shoulder. I don't have a confidence monitor here, so I don't know what's actually happening. So we are going to, I'm gonna add a different light here. Let me turn one more light on. Come here, you, where is it? 
button here somewhere. There it is. There, I just turned on an additional light. Open the gates up here a little bit. This is the same, it's the Felix LED, just like the one I had in there, but it's a bigger version of it. So I'm going to repeat the test. I need the camera, I'll be right back. Details. Okay, pulled the memory card probably without ejecting it. I'm sure there's an error waiting for me. All right, so we are once again going to do a a white balance, auto white balance off of this camera here. Turn the camera on. And how can I make this obviously different? Um, I'm gonna put, this is the little case that the Luma thing comes with. I'm gonna include that in the shot so we know this is the one from here. Now you can't see through here, sorry. But let's go to white balance, set that back to auto, and take a picture. Looks good, I'm gonna do two as I did before. Looking fabulous, okay. And now we're gonna do our color temperature reading. Put this guy right in the center, hit the start. Now can you, so we're gonna go in and set select white, oops, wrong one. Let's try that one more time. This time in English. There we go, white balance set. We're gonna set it to 4710, 47, 4700. That's the one set and no magenta shift. It shows a magenta shift of zero. So that's the one we're doing this time. So now let's try this again and let's see what we get. Okay, that's it. That's what we wanted to check. Is there anything else I need to do here? I don't think so. Let's go back in the other room. Um, I can leave this. I don't need, let's just bring it. Let's just bring all this stuff. Okay, turn my other mic back on too. And head back into the other room. All righty. Super, so now, Get my ears back in again. Um, Joshua is asking, couldn't you adjust the lighting until the reading was 4,700 exactly? Yes, but the point here is to be able to measure accurately what the lighting is. And that tiny little bit, that 10 degrees, is not going to make a difference, this big of a difference of what we saw in the previous pictures. Um, if I was... If when I did the side by side, it was a tiny, tiny bit different, I would attribute it to that difference of the inability of the camera to go that granular on the white balance setting. But we saw a huge shift in difference. So that's that's more than 10 degrees for sure. Okay. Uh, all right, let's do this. And so that again, the lighting out there was different because we had um, we had different brand of LED lights that were the main light source. We had another one of these, another Felix light is a secondary light source that was a bit warmer. So that's what would have been kind of the other light that's mixing things up. But they're different lights, they're totally different lights, right? So let's, uh, let's see what we can do. So now I'm going to back into Lightroom. So we're still looking at the old one. Let's bring up the import window again. There we go. So we've got, um, uncheck those. I want these two pictures here. Those are the ones that I want. And import away. And still dramatically different, isn't it? And it looks the same type of different. I don't know, guys. I don't know, guys. I think I think that there's something still. It's, is it closer? Let's see. Let's go back to, uh, how can I do this? I need to see. I don't even know where these pictures just went. Folders, Lightroom. Grid view. Oh yeah, there they all are. Okay, so let me just put all these into a um, WV test. And yeah, I mean, that's hugely different, man. See, both of these, there's that picture and that picture, both look pretty good to me. Let's go into the survey mode here. Both those look the same. I mean, that's different lighting sources, different lighting temperatures, but those settings, those two do look the same. It's the camera calibrated differently on these. Um, and then there's, of course, let's go back to here. Let's compare this one and this one. And this is a little underexposed, but still it's, it's way, it does look a little bit more neutral though. This one looked more blue. I'd say this one does look a little, a little bit more neutral, but it's still not right. It is still not accurate. And that, that's the problem. I, I invited them to watch live today. I'm not seeing any comments from them on here. I do, I recognize that they do live nine, eight or nine hours ahead of here, but, um, it's too bad. I was really hoping they'd be on the show. I was really hoping this was just going to work. 
we tried two things. We tried both things they suggested. We tried the reset and we tried a different lighting environment. Now, granted, it's not like massively different lighting environment, but it is different. So, you know, I can't, I can't use a product expecting it to give me an accurate white balance reading if I don't, I mean, I can't be comparing to the auto white balance every time to see if this particular lighting setup is giving me an accurate reading that kind of defeats the purpose. So that's really unfortunate. I'm, I'm, I'm bummed. I'm super bummed. Uh, Trevor says, I think the camera's internal color sensor is consistently better. Well, I mean, I would hope it would be awesome and accurate, but you know, this is, this is a dedicated meter. That's kind of what it's supposed to do. I'm bummed. Okay. Well, if let's say this much, well, you know what? I haven't done other tests. I'm going to have to do other types of tests. All I've really done here is the white balance test, right? I haven't done an exposure test. Should I do, want to do exposure? Let's do an exposure test too. Let's go back to the comments real quick, see what's going on here. Um, do a quick little house ad, and then we'll do an exposure test as well. You guys are chatting about my system out there. You guys don't need to hear about that. Let's see here. Yesterday, what did you miss yesterday? Yesterday, you might have missed. I did an affinity photo uh, presentation for my live training series that was video 1005. This was on filters. This was the first of the filters one. It was, we called it live in parentheses filters because not all filters are live. But everything we did there is actually live. And that was uh, that was really fun. It's, re it's really impressive. And actually, in yesterday's view uh, demo, training, whatever you call it, I was playing with the uh, motion blur. And then I opened it up on the iPad to see how the speed, how the performance compared. The iPad is faster. It's incredible. And it's an old iPad Pro. It's not a new one. It's like two years old or a year and a half old or whatever it is. Uh, fantastic. I'm blown away. That that software is so cool. So do check it out. There, That will be up on photoapps.expert slash live later today. That's what was being uploaded now that we had to pause. So that will uh, that will be on its way up. And uh, do check that out later today. It's, uh, it's pretty awesome. And what else? I haven't done this in a while. Let's do this. Hey, who's coming to Mexico with me? You're all coming, right? Come on, guys. You know you all want to come to Mexico with me. We're going to Mexico in October of this year. Go to photojoseph.com slash workshop to learn all about it. We're going to Oaxaca, and it is a fantastic place. It's lots of fun, lots of good food, lots of uh, awesome photos, lots of awesome everything. Come with us. Come along. It's a good party. You missed the initial big discount, but you still have until the rest of this month, I think, to get a second tier discount before the price goes up to full price. So get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Okay, uh, let's see what's going on here. In the chat, Ryan Green is repeating Scorgasm's question. Remember, you guys, you've got to, uh, if you've got a question for me, you've got to put a photo just in front of it. He's wondering if I could do a show live discussion about monitor. Oh, that's, save that for later, man. Okay. Uh, do, 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 do. Trevor says a tighter methodology would, would be to take side-by-side -side readings with something like a Sekonic C500R, a dedicated color meter specifically for digital sensors. Yes, true, but I'm not that smart. Um, and I don't have one of those, and I would have to, I could request one, but it's like a $1,000 meter, right? I'm just so not interested in that. That's why I got this. It's not something that's critical to my workflow, but it was a really nice to have. And for the price, it was it was a really cool you know, little little thing to throw in my kit. And this tiny, tiny little, I love that it's so tiny. But if it's not working, it's not working. Okay, let's do, uh, Joshua just asked if I have another meter. I do have a ambient light meter, but it's, it's old, it's not here. Oh, I loaned it to another photographer. He hasn't returned it yet. Some people. Um, it is, uh, it's old. <laughs> it's like 20 years old. I did some comparisons with it a little while ago to see how accurate it was, and it was totally off. And then I found a, a way to recalibrate. It was the weirdest thing. You had to take a dollar bill. I don't know if it had something, if just paper, or if it had something to do with the metallic that's in the paper. I don't know. And then run it over the sensor, the light meter sensor. It was a weird thing. And it really did. It worked. It totally reset it. It was awesome. Um, but that's, I still have, and that was years ago that I did that. So anyway, I don't have it anyway, so I can't do a comparison. Okay. Let's do a, let's do a exposure meter test. That's what we're going to do now. We're going to do that right here. We don't need to go anywhere else. Okay. So let me get my card back out of here. Uh, that's already ejected. Excellent. Okay. Put that in here. So we're going to do an ambient exposure test. Now, I will say the, the photo that I took that was the, the um, title card for the show. So if we look at that real quick again. So this photo that I took for the title card, that's accurate. That is an actual read, meter, read, meter reading, F28 at two thousandths of a second. And that was metered, obviously, by the Luma. And that is what I set the camera to. So it was accurate. That was this morning outdoors. That was accurate. But we're going to do it again right here and see how similar they are. Okay, 
Make some space. Get this out of the way. Oh, shit. Uh, could you bring me the gray card again, Ryan? Thank you. I'm going to need that. And let's turn this guy back on. And... Okay, so now, uh, let's see here. Thank you. This. Uh, no, I don't need that. You can go ahead and close the door. Um, so let's get... Let's plug this guy back in. I think it's the dome. Yeah, it's the dome side for this. Light meter allow. Yes, you may be used. Let's change this to uh, photo ambient. Okay, start reading. We're going to take the ISO up to 400. And we're going to leave the aperture at 2.8. Okay, set it down here. Let's move this over a little bit. And I know you can't see it, sorry, but it says F28, 125th of a second at ISO 400. So that's that's the meter read. You totally can't see that, can you? That's the meter reading that I've got right now. F28, 125th at 400th of a second. We don't even need to put this into the computer to check it, do we? We can just, we can make this really easy. I can go into after priority. Oh, I can't do F28 on this lens at, what if I go wide? Oops. Wide is 3.2. What is this? I always forget what this lens is supposed to be. This is supposed to be F28 at wide. Oh, I'm in this like weird video format. Well, whatever. ISO is, what did I say on there? 400. ISO is fixed at 400. Aperture, so 3.2. We're going to readjust this thing to a 3.2 aperture. So 3.2 aperture, it's at 1 80th of a second. Okay, at F3.2, ISO 400, 1 80th of a second. That's what this says. I will take a picture. So it is reading at F3.2, it's reading 1 25th of a second. Let's just overexpose. Let's try that again. Let's uh, let you see. You guys can watch this in real time. Do, 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 plug you in. And there we go. Okay, so can you see? Yeah, you can see. At the bottom left corner, you see the reading F3.2. It's at 1 60th of a second. And let's confirm the ISO. ISO, ISO is set to 400. And that's what it's reading. Let's bring up the histogram. It is definitely centered 32 160th. So that is a different setting. Let's put this into manual now and go to. It's said to do 1 80th of a second at 32. There's no question that that is overexposed. Yep, that is definitely over. So you can see the histogram down on the bottom as well. I don't know, guys. I, I've, I'm, I'm not confident. I'm not confident. Again, maybe it's maybe it's the LED lightings. Maybe this thing just doesn't like LED lights. Um, the Luma guys are going to have to respond again. I'm, I'm kind of done. I think they're going to have to respond again. That is unfortunate. Uh, I really, really want this thing to be awesome, but clearly. To be awesome, it has to actually work as advertised. So we're going to leave it there. All right, let's see what is going on over in the chat room, see if there's anything to chit-chat on, and then we're going to wrap it up. Um, you know, people don't want to talk, talk about methodologies there. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, light meters are super easy to make. It should be spot on, hopefully. Well, I would, that's what I would think. That's what I'd hope. So uh, you guys are talking about other stuff. Okay. I guess, I guess that's it. Um, okay, let's uh, let's wrap this up and come back for the commentary section. So, as usual, guys, if you're watching this live or not watching this live, if you're watching this, basically, you, I'm looking at you, I'm talking to you, buddy. Uh, do this, hit the thumbs up, do it right now. Just, just, just go down, scroll, hit it, just hit the thumbs up. I know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep doing this because I gotta ask. I gotta. It's, it's easy to forget. YouTube doesn't make it easy to do a thumbs up, you act, if you're watching full screen, you have to leave full screen, tap the thumbs up thing. I know it's kind of a drag. I, they need a thumbs up that's actually on the video. If I was a major YouTuber and I could actually influence what they do, I would say that. Hey, Casey, are you watching? MKBHD, are you watching? I wish. Uh, go tell them to put a thumbs up thing on the video overlay. That really should be there. On iOS, on mobile, iOS, Android, everything else as well as desktop. That would be cool. Wouldn't that be cool? That'd be great. That'd be handy for me. But, you know, anyway, yeah, hit it for me. Um, anything else I want to tell you about? Let me look at my notes here. Uh, buh, 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 buh. Yeah, we did the pod, We did the live training thing. We did the, um, we got a bunch of cool podcasts coming up. I guess that's it. All right, let's bail out of here. We'll come back in a moment for the commentary. If you're watching live, don't go anywhere. If you're watching not live, there's going to be a link right in the Foursquare that comes up that'll allow you to go to the commentary video. We'll see you back here in just a moment. Bye-bye.